Well, I guess all this is fair in politics and war, huh? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to you, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on. Welcome to the mental house, because it is definitely crazy out here. Okay? You know good and well that that's a shame that they done beat Nancy Pelosi's husband in the head with a hammer, and he's 82 years old, and left him needing brain surgery. And they broke in the house, though, looking for Nancy. I mean, no, this is not her first time with um, a problem with vandalism at her home. I remember a few years ago, somebody broke in it or broke, you know, not broke in it, but wrote all kinds of graffiti on the walls and, you know, put a pig's head out there. Just insanity. And I'm, I'm sure he's a MAGA. I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that he is. He's a hemp jury maker. So y'all going to probably try to blame it on the weed he smoked. Uh, he broke into Nancy Pelosi's six million San Francisco home and battered her husband, Paul, 82, with a hammer and left him needing brain surgery. And that is just a shame. You know, you can't be beating up uh, us seniors like that and thinking that um, you're going to be blessed. I mean, I'm serious. I don't care what they did. You don't be beating up old people and you don't mess up with children. I have a very soft spot in my heart for both because now that I'm considered an old person and God knows how I feel about my babies, you know, this is just really a sad state of affairs. And it shows you just how crazy we really are. The man who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband with a hammer early Friday morning is a former nudist from British Columbia who posted crazed right-wing conspiracy theories online. See there? Police say they have arrested David DePape, 42, after he broke into Pelosi's San Francisco home and beat Paul with a hammer. He was looking for the speaker herself. The Pepe grew up north of the border, but moved from British Columbia to California 20 years ago. He followed a love interest, his stepfather told CNN. He ended up in the Berkeley area, a liberal conclave of the city, where he lived in a three-bedroom Victorian flat with famed nudist activist Gypsy Taub. Taub and her fiancé, Jameis Smith, Tap the pair to be their best man. The pape, the pape, his name, I'm sorry, reportedly served as a father figure to, to Top's children. At the time, he designed hemp jewelry, selling bracelets to make a living. An acquaintance told CNN that the pape was struggling with hard drugs about eight years ago. Why are you talking about it now? And was trying to create a new life for himself. And so what? He's blaming Nancy Pelosi? She said she cut off contact with the paper after receiving disturbing emails in which he sounded dangerous and out of touch with reality. Why didn't you tell the police? Why didn't you tell um, somebody in some kind of position of authority to do a wellness check on his his, um insanity. Now look at the result of it. His social media showed that he posted conspiracy theories about the origins of the COVID epidemic, about the validity of the 2020 election, and on January 6th, insurrection itself. Now, you know what, y'all? I want y'all to know something real, and I, I just want to state this. This MAGA stuff is, is going way damn too far. Way too far. And um, I just think, really, I really do think that if we don't put um, somebody in office that has a little bit of sense, not these crazy conspiracy theories of people, then we really going to have a hard time. First of all, we know 
America has not been a, a, demo, a democratic country, although it touts itself as one. We know for a long time that injustice has rained down. And there's a lot of demands. But I really do believe that this election is going to tell a whole lot. It's, it's going to get you to thinking about what the people did in the 50s and the 40s before the most important piece of legislation was passed, which was the Civil Rights Bill. Then in the modern era, in the modern day era, 60 years ago, was the biggest piece of legislation passed. Because after that, we haven't done anything. We haven't done anything. And it's going to all come to a head. And you're going to see when you don't have a democracy at all. At all. You might think it's bad now for us. But uh, I'm going to tell you, I can talk to my mom and them, and they can tell us just how bad it was. And they tell me all the time just how bad it was. Uh, so I'm very versed in the civil rights struggle. Because my parents were people that ushered in that era. Especially my dad. My point is, we have taken that for granted, and we haven't held the Democratic Party to task, and now we're mad because we see other people getting rights around us, not thinking that the LGBT community uh, lobby did all kinds of things to make sure that they wasn't forgot about. We don't have the same gumption, it seems like, that we had 50 years ago. And everybody is taking advantage of the things that we made possible. Okay? So if it wasn't important for you to vote, there's no way in the world they'd be trying to take away your vote, your right to vote, and your ability to bear arms. I mean, they, they wouldn't do it if, it if it didn't mean anything. Why would they? Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, his social media I said that he talked about that. He defended former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, who was found guilty of killing George Floyd. He should have been back in his country where he came from. They said, go back to where you came from. <laughs> He's definitely one that should have been back where he came from. He caused Chauvin's trial a modern lynching and falsely indicated that Floyd died from a drug overdose. Mike Kanye said. He also posted a long screeds about religion, including claims that that Jesus is the Antichrist. When the peer broke into Pelosi's home, he was shouting, Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Speaker Pelosi, though, was in Washington, D.C. when Paul was brutally attacked. So he was taken to Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital and underwent brain surgery. Oh, my goodness. Pelosi was able to speak with her husband before his operation. The Pepe, meanwhile, will be booked at the San Francisco County Jail on several charges, including attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elderly abuse, and additional felonies, as he should. The Pape entered the Pelosi residence through a sliding door at the back of the house, and aerial footage showed that broken panes and smashed glass all over the place on the uh, ground to their home. Again, um, his target was Nancy Pelosi. Instead, he found her husband there. So he confronted Paul yelling, you know, of course, where's Nancy? Uh, he tried to tie Paul up until Nancy got home. When police arrived, the suspect told him, we're waiting for Nancy. San Francisco Police Chief William Scott indicated that there, are some, there was some type of confrontation between the two men involving a hammer. But it is unclear who the hammer belonged to, if the pape brought it with him or if Paul 
I had to use it for defensive reasons, and it was taken from him. Scott said that when his officers entered a the home, they observed Mr. Pelosi and the suspect both holding a hammer. The suspect pulled the hammer away from Mr. Pelosi and violently assaulted him with it. Our officers immediately tackled the suspect, disarmed him, took him into custody, requested emergency backup, and rendered medical aid. Scott noted that the motive for his attack is still being determined. He did not answer any questions uh, short of the statement that he made. The assault on Paul Pelosi occurred at 2.27 in the morning. Wow. Early, early in the morning. And like I said, Nancy is not um, a stranger to this kind of craziness. Because in January 2021, a pig's head was left outside her garage door with red paint and a demonstration saying $2,000 COVID relief checks were not enough. Paul Pelosi made headlines earlier this year when he was arrested for a DUI in Napa Valley when he crashed his Porsche into one of the properties uh, in their portfolio. Meanwhile, political attacks have been on the rise this year. And in the wake of the attack on Paul Pelosi, U.S. Capitol Police are assessing additional security options for the protection of the families of congressional leadership. Currently, there is no formal protection for the families or staff or members of Congress. Private security can be paid for out of campaign funds, though. Lawmakers from both political parties have faced threats. Uh, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, claimed that one of his supporters was attacked. Listen, we ain't even going to talk about him because he's running around uh, trying to beat people up with a MAGA flag. And I saw uh, some footage of him getting his butt whipped. And he ended up in the hospital. But I'm not so necessarily convinced that he was just plain attacked. I think he was doing the attacking first and then he just got broke off. You know? But to beat somebody early in the morning like that, especially a senior citizen, I mean, man, I mean, how low can you go? How low can you go? Uh, what happened to Paul Pelosi was a dastardly act, Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said in a statement. I spoke with Speaker Pelosi early this morning and conveyed my deepest concern and heartfelt wishes to her husband and her family, and I wish him a speedy recovery. He ain't never going to be the same. Not after that. I mean, we can't take all that kind of stuff. That's why you don't see a lot of older people fighting. We just going to do you and then get it over with because ain't nobody got time to be out there fighting. So as you see, he got beat up his side his head with a hammer. Horrified and disgusted by reports that Paul Pelosi was assaulted in his and Speaker's home last night. <laughs> Grateful to hear that Paul is on track, <coughs> excuse me, to make a full recovery. And that the law enforcement, including our stellar Capitol Police, are on the case. That's what uh, Mitch McConnell said. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Uh, this is the upscale Pacific Heights where the Pelosi's own their home. Has not been immune from crime. Wave hitting, uh, the crime wave hitting San Francisco. In recent months, a nearby neighbor revealed how he was robbed at gunpoint outside his own mansion in the area. People ain't playing. People struggling. And you are no longer going to keep on flaunting your wealth in front of them. And you can't even give them a $2,000 uh, stimulus check, as the man said. I mean, come on. You see, Nancy... Hurry up and kill the bill, the um, the in, in investigation into inside trading with Congress people, with politicians. Uh, 
I mean, there's so much corruption. And it, it makes me real hard. It makes it real hard for me to not understand where people are coming from. However, this has gone way too far. Way too far. You don't have the right. I don't care what your reason. Uh, to beat people because of your corrupt viewpoints. You know, you should just get some help. And if black people can show this amount of self-control as bad as we've been treated in this country, made to build a country that you can't even be a whole citizen in, and if anybody should be out here beating people with hammers, it should be us. But no, we inflict the hurt on ourselves. We got misplaced anger. Yeah, I said it. Because we are not really mad at us. We just hate us because y'all hate us. And when you don't like something and when you've treated something so bad for so long, you know, it's like a problem, child. They just act out. This is really a sad case. It really is. Um, like I said, she's been she's been vandalized. She's before, and she's been a target before. When they broke into the Capitol, the first thing the guy was saying is, "Where is Nancy Pelosi?" Which is insane. So I'm going to let the police do an, um, their little uh, reporting on what this is all about. Zoom in. I'm sorry. Okay, good morning. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Pete Bill Scott from the San Francisco Police Department. At approximately 2.27 this morning, San Francisco police officers were dispatched to the residence of Speaker Nancy Pelosi regarding an A-priority well-being check. When the officers arrived on scene, they encountered an adult male and Mr. Pelosi's husband, Paul. Our officers observed Mr. Pelosi and the suspect both holding a hammer. The suspect pulled the hammer away from Mr. Pelosi and violently assaulted him with it. Our officers immediately tackled the suspect, disarmed him, took him into custody, requested emergency backup, and rendered medical aid. The suspect has been identified as 42-year-old David DePatney. Mr. Pelosi and Mr. DePatney were transported to a local hospital for treatment. This is an active investigation currently being led by the San Francisco Police Department Special Investigation Division. We are working closely with our partners from the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the U.S. Capitol Police, and our district attorney here in San Francisco County, uh, D.A. Brooke Jenkins, and her team. The motive for this attack is still being determined. Mr. DePepe will be booked at the San Francisco County Jail on the following charges. Attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, burglary, and several, several other additional felonies. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank the responding officers for their swift action this morning. Those San Francisco police officers are Officer Colby Wilmes, Officer Kyle Cagney, and Sergeant Edmund Hoyne. I'd also like to thank our emergency dispatcher, Heather Grimes, who's standing here to my left, for a really amazing job. For inquiries regarding Mr. Pelosi and his condition, we refer you to the statement issued by Speaker Pelosi's office this morning. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our district attorney, Brooke Jenkins, for a few brief comments. And I, let me say in advance, this is what we know at this time. We will update you further, but we will not be able to take any questions after the statement. Thank you, Chief Scott. And I well. Y'all heard that. This is a crazy time we're living in, y'all. And um, I don't think that we are really ready for... Because y'all ain't never experienced, like I said before, 
what it felt like to live in the 50s and the 40s. Well, we soon going to find out. And some of y'all that talk so tough about what we should do, I want to see where you at now. At then. Okay? Because this is getting real, real sick. Real, real sick. And if you ask me, these MAGA people need to be put down. And the only way we can put them down is to, um, you know, win at the polls and arrest their asses. Because that's what needs to be done now. Anybody running around with that red hat, just like y'all do the gang members in uh, Compton, you uh, associate them with they got a white t-shirt on and blue jeans or whatever, then they're part of the gang culture. You know how you do. And then if they could be in a different area with something on, you arrest them just because by the virtue of what they have on, you need to start doing this to these MAGA people. But you don't want to do it because they're white. Yeah, I said it. Let's keep it real. The same energy that you all use when you're dealing with the gang members in L.A. And trust me, I'm not making no excuses for them because as far as I'm concerned, those are pieces of crap too. Okay? So I'm not making no excuses for them. The fact of the matter is you're going to have to use that same tactics to deal with these MAGA people because... Um, so we can find out who really is the enemy. We already know the red hats are, okay? But, you know, from the way it was looking, we got some FBI agents. We got some other uh, military people. I don't know. We're going to have to start weeding these people out because they are definitely a threat, not just to democracy, but to people's peace. Okay, that's just my opinion. I'd like to know what y'all think. Leave your comment below, and if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share the channel.